Finding Noah's Ark was like finding a lost part of history. The ancient woodwork was what stood between humanity's survival and total annihilation at a point in the course of our evolution. When archaeologists found an ancient silhouette of this enigma carved out on the sides of a Turkish mountain, it ended up as one of the grandest discoveries of the 21st century. However, beyond the Ark remains, archaeologists have discovered something even more shocking. This new discovery doesn't only justify the story of the Doomsday Flood, but also reveals something mind-blowing, something no one expected. What mind-blowing facts did scientists discover about Noah's Ark? How does this discovery reshape our cosmic timeline and knowledge of humanity's history? What new, fascinating events have emerged in line with these recent discoveries? Join us in this video as what they found inside Noah's Ark in Turkey. Terrifies the world. For decades, researchers, archaeologists and Bible scholars have been searching the globe for the intriguing sea vessel called Noah's Ark. This intriguing piece of woodwork holds an evolutionary tale. A tale of when the world began anew after a doomsday flood that wiped off humanity from the face of the earth. Recorded in the holy books of Christianity, Judaism and Islam, the Great Flood was a catastrophic one that came from a 40 days and 40 nights of non-stop rainfall. The epic flood destroyed everything in its path, save the man Noah and all the people and creatures aboard his ark. Although the Christian Bible tells of this intriguing story in detail, not much evidence exists to convince the scientific community that such an apocalyptic event took place. However, things turned around when a very ancient piece of formation matching the description of Noah's Ark was found in Turkey. Even more intriguing is that this mind-blowing woodwork nested on a mountain akin to the last resting place of this ark mentioned in the Bible. The fascinating discovery sent shockwaves through the Christian community. Tucked away in the mountains of Turkey, the uncanny piece of rock has been confirmed by many to be the last remains of Noah's Ark. I'm sure you're wondering, isn't Noah's Ark supposed to be woodwork? Well, going by Bible scholar statistics, the Great Flood took place about 5,000 years ago. Such a long time is enough to make any piece of woodwork rot or entirely transform it into something all the more peculiar. You see, the Durapina formation is shaped just like a boat and going by measurements, this supersized structure fits perfectly with presumed measurements. With a length of 515 feet, a width of 85 feet and a height of 49 feet, the archaeological finding is the closest thing to Noah's Ark ever found in history. Also, archaeologists have dated the structure back to about 3000 to 5000 BC. The Ark of Noah was a mega-sized structure, unlike any vessel of its kind. According to the Bible legend at the time, there was nothing like rainfall on the earth, much more a flood. In fact, the idea of building a big boat to keep people was completely absurd and crazy. But to make matters worse, Noah had to build this megastructure alone. Planning and constructing the ark took a whopping 120 years. Initial blueprints involved making the ark out of gopher wood with a single door and window. Noah's backbreaking task didn't just entail constructing the ark, but also warning other humans who lived at the time about the great catastrophe to come and gathering tons of food that would be needed for the epic sea voyage. By the time Noah finished the ark, a shocking sight emerged. In a mesmerizing wonder, all animals trooped into the ark in twos, as if aware of the great disaster to come. As soon as the triumphant entry was done, the Bible recounts that God shut in Noah, his wife, his three sons, and their wives inside the ark before the heavy downpour began. The apocalyptic rainfall lasted 40 days, while the ensuing floods lasted for a mind-blowing 371 days on end. Noah's ark finally settled on Mount Ararat, where it stayed until the waters dried up completely for the family and creatures to exit into a new world. Although the Christian holy book expressively mentions Ararat as the final home of the Ark, 
the Durapinna structure on Tenderek is still the most convincing relic of Noah's Ark to ever exist. Many facets of the Christian church have accepted this geologic formation as the Ark's remains, ignoring the red flags. One of the early advocates of the Durapinna structure was the late American nurse anesthetist Ronald Eldon Wyatt who spotted the structure in 1986. The enthusiastic American was noted for his many alleged Bible-related discoveries. Until his death in 1999, he made over 100 trips and uncovered several sites and artefacts related to Bible archaeology. Wyatt strongly proposed the Durupina site as the burial place of Noah's Ark, and he convinced the church to believe in this. However, this passionate researcher came under heavy fire from other archaeologists and scholars, as many claimed he had no qualifications to be an archaeologist, nor was he the original person to discover the Durapinna structure. Wyatt was accused of not conducting any legally licensed excavations, but this didn't stop him from making his findings, like the Durapinna structure, go public. The only conflicting detail in this discovery is that it is not located in the exact place many thought it should be. The Durapana Formation is located on Mount Tenderek, a small shield volcano in far eastern Turkey, 500 miles from the capital. As earlier noted, the final resting place of Noah's Ark, as recorded in religious books like the Bible, is Mount Ararat in Turkey. However, after centuries of searching and digging, nothing like Noah's Ark has been found on this volcanic mountain. Many have claimed to find pieces of wood and other not-so-significant stuff that aren't quite anything as megalithic as Noah's legendary boat. The only thing that comes close to Noah's Ark in discovery is this piece of enigma, the Durapana. Considering that the fascinating Durapana structure is also located far south of Mount Ararat, it became all the more convincing that this was indeed the lost remains of the Ark. And so, different theories have risen to explain the mystery of how the Ark moved over from the top of Ararat, as stated in the Christian Bible, to this new location not too far away. Yet, some researchers have argued that the structure is naturally formed and isn't the remains of any sort of man-made boat. These groups of researchers suggest that it is merely coincidental that the Durapana was formed in a shape that resembles a boat. In fact, some researchers believe that the landing place of Noah's Ark was entirely different from what we have come to believe. Many theories have emerged over the years to prove that Mount Ararat isn't the nesting place of the Ark. One theory is that Ararat may have been a mythical location, not a physical one. And so, while the Bible did mention Ararat as the Ark's final resting place, it may not have been exactly referring to the mountain Ararat in Turkey. Another theory is that the names of the mountains may have been mixed up somehow over the years, and maybe Mount Tundurek was actually the Ararat of the Bible. One other theory is that something or someone may have moved the final remains of the Ark. You see, many renowned archaeologists, including those from the 19th century like James Bryce, have reported finding pieces of wood high up in the volcanic mountain of Ararat. So it would seem that Ararat was indeed the initial resting place of the Ark. But then, some thousands of years ago, it slid down from the top of the mountain to a different site still within the vicinity. These strange and controversial theories follow the suggestions of famed researcher and author David Allen Deal. Allen Deal suggested that based on how ancient texts like the Epic of Gilgamesh describe things, it isn't safe to take things literally. Allen Deal invented a crazy theory that Noah's Ark may have landed on another mountain called Mashu, or the Mesha Mountains, just close to Ararat. David Allen Deal also suggested that Noah and his family may have built their first homes after the flood using parts of the ark. This would explain why pieces of wood have been found in sites like Mount Ararat. Allen Deal's theory about Mesha being the actual resting place of the ark is profound, especially considering that the names Mesha and Nashwan mean pulled out of the water and Noah's Zion, respectively. The intriguing mountain also has two peaks that look like a wall 
and this particular wall was cited in the Epic of Gilgamesh as the place where Noah's Ark first landed. While exploring the strange location in 1996 and 1997, Alan Deal made an exciting discovery. He realized that many of the surrounding villages and locations bore names that seemed to tell a story about Noah's Ark landing there. But although David Allen Deal suggested the Mesha Mountain as the resting place of Noah's Ark, nothing significant was found there. At least nothing as significant as the Durupinar Formation. Early proponents of the Durupinar Formation, like Wyatt, came up with their own theories about why the Ark wasn't on the famed Mount Ararat. According to Wyatt, a severe mudslide must have swept the Ark away into the nearby landscape, landing it on Mount Tenderek. Interestingly, Wyatt also saw something mind-boggling in the Durupanar Formation that convinced him beyond doubt about its authenticity. He found a small stone with the same boat-like shape carved into it, but with eight faces. To Wyatt, this stone was a supporting relic to back up his story. You see, ancient biblical cultures had a habit of setting up monuments or structures for remembrance. For instance, they usually set up stones as altars for sacrifice and memorials after epic battles and encounters. Wyatt believed this eight-faced stone was one of such memorials. According to him, the eight faces signified the eight members of Noah's household that survived the catastrophe to become the world's second parents after Adam and Eve. Wyatt also found strange metallic objects of magnesium, titanium and aluminium, which were later proven to be metal rivets used for the ships. A team of archaeologists from Turkey and US colleges has probed the Durupanar Formation, digging for more clues or convincing relics that lie hidden. Their diggings revealed incredible evidence of human activity, such as the boat-shaped formation that dates back to nearly 5000 BC. Farouk Kaya, a professor at Agri Ibrahim Sesan University involved in this research, shared that analysis of soil and rock samples showed human activity that dates back to the years following the flood. He said, In terms of dating, it is stated that there was life in this region as well. This was revealed in the laboratory results. However, beyond finding signs of life, this dedicated team of researchers also found something tantalizing, something that completely changed everything. While featuring more advanced technology to employ in digging the intriguing site, the team found something shocking. They found new samples of rock and soil that contained marine materials and seafood dating back to the time of the flood. Scientists collected nearly 30 rock and soil samples from the enigmatic location before analyzing the findings at the Istanbul Technical University. The samples were found to date back to at least 3000 BC. It was also discovered that there had been human activities from that time to about 5000 BC. Considering that Noah's flood goes back up to 5000 years ago, experts now believe there's a lot more to this site than meets the eye and it may, in fact, be all that's left of the lost Ark of Noah. Be that as it may, some earlier researchers do not agree with the Durupanar structure being Noah's Ark. One such researcher is Irving Finkel. Finkel, a man who has spent his lifetime examining the mysterious clay tablets of ancient Mesopotamia, is well known for his controversial theories and stance on many world issues. Finkel believes the flood story quite all right. However, he believes that the Bible version of the Flood was a pale narrative derived from Sumerian and Babylonian literature. According to Finkel, the real truths about the food are embedded in a 4,000-year-old clay tablet, which he likes to call the Ark Tablet. Finkel spent about 20 years of his life translating the text on this tablet, during which he made several eye-opening discoveries. The tablet shared details of how the ark that beat the flood was not shaped like a canoe, as many describe it to be, but was, in fact, round in shape. Finkel said this, The fact that the ark was found is the headline finding. It's something nobody in the world anticipated because everybody knows what Noah's ark looked like. According to Finkel, the many things he discovered from the tablet about the ark 
happened to be the biggest shock in his 44 years of service. The researcher is enthusiastic about sharing everything he has learned. He even wrote a book about it. This amazing discovery threw the Christian community into excitement while leaving many scientists who never believed this story scratching their heads for answers. You see, although most of the records of the Flood as a cataclysmic event only exist in ancient texts, a lot of convincing pieces of evidence have been found that suggest that this event actually happened. For instance, archaeologists have occasionally found ancient bits of seaweed and sea creature fossils in soil samples of higher grounds and mountains. These samples suggest that these highlands, at one point in time, were under a vast ocean or sea of water. But then, many still ask, is this enough evidence to prove that an unfathomably large volume of raging waters once destroyed the world? The enigmatic legend of Noah's Ark has always been a major bone of contention. While many religious activists firmly believe the cataclysmic flood story, members of the scientific community argue that it doesn't conform to our cosmic timeline of humanity's history. For the science community, until substantial proof or evidence is found about the flood and the events that followed, it never happened. However, aside from the Bible's flood story, many other ancient texts from different cultures also tell of a cataclysmic flood that completely reformed the world. And here is the shocking thing. All these stories share many things in common. For instance, Gilgamesh's epic tells of a mysterious man named Utnapishtim who survived a great flood because he was favoured by the gods. It also stressed how the gods were angry and decided to wipe humanity from the face of the earth. This description bears a striking semblance to Noah in the Bible's version. Again, in ancient Hawaii, there's a well-known story of a person named Nuhu who built a big canoe to escape a mighty flood and later ended up at the top of a mountain. Another similar story is the Atrahasis epic which dates back to the 19th century and shares many uncanny similarities with the Bible version of the flood story. This epic tells of how the world had to start over after the doomsday flood and also talks about a seven-day warning about the flood. And so, these flood stories from different times and cultures all weave together to form a complex web of an enigmatic tale of wonder. Even though they come from different cultures and have different details, they all paint a sensational picture of an end-of-world event, followed by a fresh new beginning for all planetary life forms. Be that as it may, Noah's Ark holds a special spot in the hearts of millions of people all over the world, which is why thousands of people have gone on private expeditions to Mount Ararat to see what secrets it holds within its peaks and throughs. It is also why the Durapina structure has grown to become so popular in a very short time. It's mind-boggling to imagine how great the flood must have been to wipe out everything that existed at the time. The Bible's book of Genesis, chapter 7 and verse 20, says that the height of the floods surpassed the highest mountain on earth by 15 cubits or 22 feet. In other words, not even Mount Everest, which stands at 29,000 feet, could withstand this enigma. Some conspiracy theorists have even suggested that this mega-disaster was actually responsible for the disappearance of ancient mythical creatures like dinosaurs, dragons, werewolves, and giant Nephilims. Researchers have deduced that for the flood to be as great as it was, it would take the total volume of water in two world oceans to be emptied into the earth in 40 days. Skeptics also express their disbelief in the Ark's designs and management. They find it impossible for one man and his family to feed and take care of thousands of animals in the ark. They ask questions like, how did they feed them all for over 300 days? How did they dispose of human and animal waste, given that the ark was never opened throughout the time? What kind of technology did the ark employ that kept it from sinking? Many experts found it improbable that Noah and his family would survive inside a sealed up boat for over 300 days. Surely, under normal circumstances, anyone in that condition would suffocate. While many skeptics find the idea of such a mind-blowing event happening hard to believe, 
most folks in the Christian community would stake their lives on it. For Christians, the story of Noah and the ark is one of awe and wonder, a testament to God's miraculous power. Many in the Christian community would give anything to see the ark one more time, even if it's just a tiny piece of it. This undying passion to see the ark one more time is what drove one man to do something no one thought was possible. Revive the ark. Down in a small area in Kentucky lies the most fantastic monument and memory of Noah's ark, spearheaded by a genius fanatic named Ken Ham. The massive multi-million Naira project is a modern-day replica of Noah's Ark, with the original dimensions as those recorded in religious texts. Featuring crazy woodwork and fantastic architecture, the monument stands as the modern-day Noah's Ark, beckoning folks from all over the world to witness its splendor. But beyond just the Ark replica, there is also a surrounding theme park, and together the site is called the Ark Encounter. With over 1.5 million visitors every year and a landmass spanning over 800 acres, this site is undoubtedly the most interesting and fascinating modern-day relic of the flood. The site is designed in such a way that it takes you back in time to the period when the apocalyptic flood hit mankind. It is interesting that Ken Ham still has big plans for the Ark Encounter. The genius inventor seeks to recreate other famous Bible stories, like the Tower of Babel, as well as a model of Jerusalem from ancient Israeli times. In the end, while there's a lot we know about the Great Flood, there are still many gaps to fill about what happened to the Ark afterwards. With many uncertainties about its final resting place, so many questions persist about this enigmatic Bible tale. Did Noah and his family really dismantle the colossal sea vessel to build homes and infrastructure? Or was there an unforeseen tragedy that wiped this legendary vessel out of the sands of our time? So many questions and so few answers. Perhaps we'd have to wait for a few more years of excavations to put all the puzzles together. Thank you for watching another episode of Voyager. While you are still here, Click on the video on your screen to see more mind-blowing videos like this one.